Guys, we're still at school and my husband's helping me record this video and I hope it goes well. So I started with the integration pipe by parts formula and we picked a problem randomly from the book um, modeled after the notes that you should have and I do have an acronym that should help you define what your U and your DV is. So most importantly what's going to happen is you're not really caring about me in the video, you're caring about the math. So you may not see me in some of those images and you might see my husband try to fast forward some of the math that I'm trying to do on the board. So you'll see me moving in and out. So to save some time, we already established what my U is and my DV is. My U is basically cosine of X because I'm following the trig part of this acronym. And my DV is basically the exponent part, which you see right here. So now we're going to pause and I'm going to do part of this integration by parts by plugging all this information back into the formula. Go. Okay. So now I've replaced this, I replace all these variables back into here to get this that you see here. But now I'm going to do another integration by parts right here. And if you notice, I'm going to put the U's and the DV's in here. So I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to put, put it on here. So just hold on a few seconds. So now we're going to use this and we're going to use integration by parts one more time. We're going to use this information. So we're going to pause again and then you're going to see that on the next step, I'm going to, I'm going to integrate by parts again. Go. So what's in the brackets is basically what you see right here using these new um, U's or DV's. It's not really new because you already knew, knew what they were from before. It's just that they alternate. Sine is always going to be cosine and vice versa, right? Cosine is going to be negative sine x, sine x. E to the x is always going to be e to the x. So that's the problem. The only thing I want to draw your attention to right here is that this here um, has a negative that I forgot on the previous slide. So I need to figure out where I got that negative from. So I need to pause for a second because I know it belongs here, but I'll come back to you right now in a few seconds. Go. Oh. Okay, so my apologies was basically right here. I forgot the negative that belongs to negative sine x dx, and I put it in here so it wouldn't be a conflict between these two. So when it's carried over, I took it out already to kind of help, help with the fact that this integral was negative to begin with. And so then this should be correct. This part here should be right. Okay, we're going to take another quick pause. Okay. Sorry, you guys. I found that I had another problem right here. Instead of copying the negative, um, here I copied a positive. So this is negative. So in turn, these two negatives will make this into a positive. And now I should be on the right track. So now what I want you to see is I basically have this here. And that here and I'm going to go ahead and move this to this side as if it were an algebraic problem so I'm going to add the integral of this to this side and it's going to create two integral e to the x cosine x dx and it's going to equal to this thing right here And then we would divide both sides by 2 and we're almost done. Okay, we're almost done. So my answer would be the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to this whole thing plus our constant c. And so the reason why we have to do this process and we have to have kind of an algebraic equation is because sine and cosine alternate and e to the x always alternate. So that's the process by which this is considered a special case number two. Okay, I hope it helped.